mindset of sisterhood. Millionaire mindset sisterhood, yes. Why stop at sisterhood? Because mm -hmm. I believe <clears throat> we can all learn from everyone. I agree. And um, the sexual orientation of where the message is coming from should be completely irrelevant. Okay, of course, coming from a man. <laughs> I, I mean, I, and I say that, I say that in, in terms of a wise man learns from a fool, a fool learns from no one. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, I take, I'm listening to you this morning mm -hmm. and I'm taking all of these gems. Yeah. And I feel that. I feel that you, you want to be part of this. I, I want to be part of this. Yeah, I know exactly. But, but I, I want that. I want that in my life. Yeah. But you're like, well, wait a minute. Why can't I have that? <laughs> Why Absolutely. can't I get that gem? Well, well are you getting them right now? Absolutely. So what it was? What's the complaint? Because it's just a. <laughs> okay. So let me explain something to you. And I get that question very often. And I promise you, a brotherhood would be coming, but I'm waiting for my Boaz. All right, when he come. But there's a brotherhood coming, and it's coming in the right time. It's just the right man got to be right here. So when he come, then we work, we're going to work on it. But here's the thing, is that I remember when I was starting the sisterhood. And the sisterhood, it, again, it's part of my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And so the the I was in New Jersey, and I was in Barnes & Noble, and I'm meeting with the women, and I'm just telling them about how we need to stick together as women. We're powerful and all this stuff, this mindset stuff, right, that you love, that you get in any way, even if you're not in the sisterhood, right? Right, okay? And so... Um, I'm going to be an honorary member, by the way. You know what? We're we going to talk about that. Okay. Um, we're going to invite you to our five-year anniversary that's happening in Connecticut. I really will invite the whole team. Right. And so... Um, so I'm in there, I'm talking and you know how I get, I'm just like, come on, we got to do this thing. And I, I, you know, and there was this, um, Muslim guy that was off to the right and he, you could tell him looking back, you know, he just kept looking back, you know, when people just like, you, you talking and he like, I'm not talking to you, but you're like in my business. Right. And so <laughs> I'm looking at him turn, but he was, he, he had a nice spirit about him. I said, um, sir, do you, do you have something that you want to say? Cause he, it was obvious. And he stood up, he says, Yes, ma'am, I do want to say. He was like, what you're teaching these women, it's amazing. And he says, let me tell you something. You can teach a man something, and you have changed that man. But when you teach a woman something, you have changed the nation, and you have changed generations. And what I know about a woman is she gets something, she's bringing it home to her husband. She's bringing it home to her children. And so it's a trickle down effect. And you start right where you're most impactful with. And it branches out. A brotherhood's coming. It's already in the making. We just need to boaz around. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, but that does not stop you from following me, mm -hmm. following the sisterhood, getting the messages, listening to the books, listening to the podcast. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So, you know, if, if I'm getting something feeding me from a brotherhood, I'm at the table. I'm a sponge. It doesn't matter. So you you could be an honorary member. <laughs> I'll be there. Yes, yes. So we've obviously talked pretty much all about mindset uh -huh. this morning yep. and how important that is. I think if somebody is listening and, and maybe upon listening to this, they've decided I'm going to change that mindset. Mm -hmm. I think some people operate under a false pretense that it – it just naturally happens. Mm -hmm. um, that it's not something that you have to be so diligently focused on. And I know that you do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember not long after I had started in our business, I, I was uh, uh, venting one day mm -hmm. to my to my father, and he said, "Are you done?" And I said, "Well, yeah, I guess." And he said, "All right. Well, now I've got to go find ten positive things to offset this negativity." Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, and it kind of dawned on me that sometimes we don't realize the negativity in our life that's affecting us. So mm -hmm. maybe what are some tangible things that you do personally or that you recommend to, to, to um, maintain that mindset or, mm -hmm. to, or to, to create it in the first place? Is that you have to um, study people who work in that mindset realm. So people study me. You know, I study other people. Um, I also journal so I constantly write every, if not every day, every other day, I constantly write affirmations and I'm careful, conscious, 
deathly careful about the words and the way that I speak words out of my mouth. You can say the same thing two different ways, one for you from a, a spirit of negativity or fear or from a spirit of faith and positivity. The same exact thing. Um, you can say, um, um, I do, I, I hate coming to work late, right? Um, is coming from a place of negativity. I hate coming to work late. It's not a bad thing, but it's giving out negative energy. Um, or you can say, when I come to work late, it doesn't make me feel like my best, but when I get here, I'm happy. You follow me? It's just offsetting. So it's being very even intentional about the words that you speak. So it's conscious. When you make that shift, you got to study people. You have to study yourself. And then you have to be conscious about the words that come out of your mouth. Your words truly have power. How do you recommend somebody studies themselves? Um, study themselves. You have to be in time. Okay, so good. So we all have um, energy. We're energy. We're beings. Beings are energy. And so this that's such a good question. I like that. Virtual, not virtual. You're here. High five. So <laughs> here's the thing. You have to be in tune with your energy. You know how you feel. You know how you feel. If you feel, if you're in here and you're angry, you that doesn't come out your mouth, but you feel it. That's a negative energy inside of you. If you pay attention to how you feel in the inside, you have to stop it. And you know how to calm yourself. And you can shift the narrative. So that is how you do it. That's, that's powerful. That right there, we could take the mic and drop that thing. <laughs> if you get in tune with your own energy, you'll know how to monitor yourself. Do you think... So talking about it on on your way up, mm -hmm. all the naysayers, yeah. the, uh, the 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 people that were not supportive. Correct. How did you? I think it's important that you don't dwell on that energy. I mean, you you making that point because mm -hmm. because I feel like that's sometimes what people they get so angry at the mm -hmm. person that's not in their corner, that's not supportive, the person that did them wrong. Yeah. What's your advice on how do you move past that? Um what you have there's a couple of things one you have to make life bigger than you so when life is bigger than you 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 have a a um more push so what i mean is like by my with my son my son was my reason he was bigger than me so i i couldn't their opinions couldn't matter um I, the other thought process lesson did you come here to bring me what's the lesson so look at people as lessons what 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 if that person is like your your husband your wife mm -hmm. that person that's supposed to be mm -hmm. your partner mm -hmm. you know what i mean and she's she may not be um consciously being that naysayer but she's you know trying to protect you with quotations you get what i'm saying yeah god give me wisdom <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing so you done messed up. You picked nah, the wrong nah. <laughs> Here's the thing. A person can only give you what's inside of them. So if they don't have inside of them this mind, this mindset of positivity, and if they have inside them, them a mindset of negativity, they can only give it to you even though it's coming from a place of what they perceive as love, right? So we, we understand that, but it's also about bringing awareness. So if you are married to this person, then it's about bringing awareness to what's happening. Just like Drew said, the father, his father said, so now that he said all this negativity, let me go do some positivity to, to neutralize it. For one negative comment, it takes um, 10 positive comments to neutralize one negative thought. So imagine all the negative thoughts over the life and the things that have to happen. The other thing is if your spouse is the one that is um, negative is that there's ways of of leading by example. You lead by example. Um, you can turn the radio on and you can put Roberta Hoskey on, on and listen to her millionaire mindset and just play out like you listening to it when she, and she gonna be like, girl, if you don't get it together. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about wisdom. It's about wisdom on how you deal with it. But then ultimately it's, um, you know, you, you gotta make sure that you have the right spouse and that's at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel that, um, you know, people's mindset over time changes. Mm -hmm. So you're in 
to piggyback off of what Brandon was saying, mm -hmm. you know, you you guys could have started off at the same place, uh, among you know, and having that same journey. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in that path, you know, something has happened mentally mm -hmm. or physically to that person, mm -hmm. and they now have taken that left turn. Yeah, and that's where the rub now starts to begin. And obviously, you can't fire your spouse. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know you can only com combat but so much negativity. Correct. So how do you bring them back, or what what would be your your key to lead people with as far as you know how to keep relationships or, or your, you and your spouse on the same track moving forward so that way you guys can both get to your de get to that destination. Mm -hmm. So I um, as a husband and wife, um, I think that is important that. You know, family that prays together, stays together. You all should study together. You also, like I said, should um, be intentional about learning. I would just say the wealth mindset. Sometimes it's easier. It's all how you package it, right? You can say you got a poverty mindset. You need to keep that poverty mindset. It goes back to the way you the words. Or you can say, you know, let's study the wealth mindset. Mm -hmm. That's wisdom. You know what? Let's study the wealth mindset. There's so many people who have been wealthy. There's so many people that have these powerful stories. How did they do it? I heard success leads blueprints. Let's study these blueprints. It's all about wisdom and it's all about how you articulate it. Let's study the wealth mindset. And if your spouse is your spouse, they're going to sit down and do it with you. And if there's a push there, then that's something else you got to deal with that. It's a deeper issue. Yeah. Um before we got you know finished i just wanted you to hit on that acronym that you were telling us about before yeah. um the podcast oh yeah so tfar this is my acronym um we're all after great results in our life uh we're looking at the results in our life that's why we're saying is it poverty is a prosperity where did i get here how did i get here what did i do you know, these are the results. I'm working here. I have this business here. I'm not. Or these things. We have these results in our life. And so if you can if you can take this journey with me right quick. Imagine walking into, my grandfather used to take us to an apple orchard. So imagine going into an apple orchard and you see all of these beautiful apple trees. And you look on the trees and you notice that there's a particular tree that has fruit on it and the trees around it have red nice red ripe apples and then there's this particular tree and this tree the apples are green and they're tan and they have like holes in it and it's rotted and it's not looking good so now imagine the tree the results of that tree are these fruit that's withered right now go with me tfar is the acronym T F A R is the acronym. T F A R. So the thoughts we have dictate the feelings. That's why I said be in tune with your feelings. Your thoughts dictate your feelings. It is impossible to have a thought without a feeling. That's why I'm talking about my life and I still get the feeling. That's why the tears still roll up because I cannot have a thought without a feeling. You cannot think about something happy and not smile. You cannot think about something that's sad and not get grieved. You, it's impossible to separate your thought from your feelings. So your thought dictate the feelings you have right now. You may be inspired. You may be happy. You're feeling the energy that I'm giving you. It's impossible to, to change the thoughts from the feelings. But guess what? Those feelings dictate your actions. The way you feel is going to dictate what you do. I feel appreciated, so I am going to do this for you. Or I feel like I'm scared and nervous, so I'm going to stay here and I'm going to shut down. Or I feel like I'm going to fail, so I'm not going to try. Or I feel like I'm going to win and I'm going to go out there. I feel like it is going to cause me to make an action. So your thoughts dictate the way you feel. What you feel dictates the way you act. But it's those actions that dictate the R, which is the results. So the results we have in our life all are dictated based on that invisible thing, which is the thought. 
Now back to the tree. Now imagine that that tree is you. And now imagine that that fruit off of that tree are your results. They don't look red like everyone else's. They're not ripe like everyone else's. You're in this tree and you're seeing people walk in abundance, but why is mine lack? Right? You can't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and go get some red paint and start saying, I'm going to paint my results. And this is what we do when we want to have the appearance of wealth when we broke. We want to appear to be wealthy. We want to drive the cars and you don't got a house or a garage to park it in. That's buying the red paint at Lowe's and painting a rotten apple. So in order to really change that tree, we got to get to the root of the problem, the roots and the invisible things. It's the invisible things that make every visible thing in this world. And it's those things that we cannot see that produces the red apples or the rotten apples in our life. So if you have rotten apples in your life, if you have a lack, if you have poverty, if, you, if you're, you're missing, if, you're, if, if there's something missing in your life, those are rotten apples. But those rotten, rotten apples are the results of something that's going on inside of you. And you have the ability, listen to me, you have the ability to change every circumstance in your life. There is nothing impossible. There's nothing impossible. You want red apples? Change the inside. Change the invisible. Change your thoughts. Because it's the thoughts that dictate the feelings, the feelings that dictate the actions, and that is how you got to this result in your life. Stop looking at the results. Look at the way you think. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. I just took you to church. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I needed some church this morning. The pastor uh, offering you know, bucket. <laughs> got my church pants on. Today. I need some church in my life this morning. This, this I can't help it. It just is it's who I am. It's who I am. This is, this is a throwaway question a little bit. Let's go talk to me. All right. So I am actually, a, 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 I play piano. I've always done it my entire life. Mm -hmm. I saw that you play. You still playing. Oh. You still playing. Oh, you was all in my book, huh? <laughs> Ooh, that's a first for me. Yeah. I have not touched it yet. Oh, you got it. Yes. It don't leave me. No, it doesn't leave me. I mean, music is my full, my whole family. I mean, uh, that's who we are. We're musicians. We're artists. Um, it's it's who we are. Um, I, the ear. I mean, I could you could play any music. I could tell you the instrument, the time, and everything. I, it's just who I am. But have I touched that? No. I decided to keep it still in the box. So let me ask you this. I mm -hmm. know music is a big part of you, but how do you how do you personally fill your cup while you're filling everybody else's? Yeah, that's good. So like I said, is that I um, often feed from other people. Let me tell you, I, I belong to T.D. Jake's church virtually. Um, I'm always feeding from people, and I also have to feed from God. So just like people who are pastors, in many ways, the role that I play is like a pastor, right? And so what they have to do is they have to set time aside to be with God and to fill themselves up and let God fill them up. Because what I'm doing in changing lives, this is not Roberta Hosky. This is the power that God has given me and the, the, the draw that God has given me. He can snatch it if he wants to. So it's just me being humble and getting back to where I need to be and staying in his presence. And that's how I get filled. So it, it doesn't come really from me, and it, it doesn't come from me, and it comes from being intentional about my purpose and being willing to do it. I'm not too busy to sit my behind down and say, okay, God, let's do it. What we got today? Mm -hmm. We got one more. How, how do you fight the, um, I guess maybe the right term is complacency? Because I, I think if we talk about poverty mindset for someone in poverty, that's very real, mm -hmm. but I think as maybe you reach certain levels of success, you can still easily slip back, and it may not be slipping all the way back to government housing, right? But it, it, oh, could, it can, it, it, right? Or it, it could just be, um, you know, fighting the complacency of where you're at. So, um, how do you do that, and what keeps you striving for that next level? Um, that's the only place where I allow a healthy fear to guide me. Um, not a fear of negativity, but a fear of, you know, it can go back. It's all based on, like I just said, TFAR, the thoughts dictate feelings and actions. So you can always slip back, right? Um, so it's a constant battle. However, I'm at this thought process and this mindset is that 
this is good this is good i'm at this thought process of automation i just took a shift y'all this is for somebody automation so we're living in a world and i'm going there i'm sorry i'm i, I hear your question but i'm gonna go a little left with it sorry. we're living in a world of technology this was somebody who's listening and there's so many ways to make money that's not traditional that i'm in a mindset of making sure that i maximize that automating my money making money in my sleep i remember the first time i made money in my sleep i literally got woke up with a sunday a ching. i was like hey I, uh, that's good <laughs> so it's like automation so it's also the mindset of yes you have this business and i'll talk about mine you have this business and it created wealth but markets shift so when markets shift you must shift with the market so when you come complacent that means you don't shift so if you become complacent, then you're dying because there's no in-between. There's no in-between. You're either increasing or decreasing. Nothing's being still. So complacency is, to me, the death chamber. So we have to continue to move. You have to continue to move and continue to move with the time, continue to be think futuristic, and use this wonderful thing of technology to automate businesses. I know that wasn't your question, but somebody need that to automate businesses. So you're saying that this is the only time that you allow that maybe fear of loss mm -hmm. to push me. Yeah. Other than I'm not, I don't move off of fear of failure, fear of success, or anything like that. It's just that it keeps it prevalent. It, it stays in my mind of, you know, if you stay complacent. That whole thing that you fought your whole life for, that can be that can come on back. See, I think that's the advantage that someone has when they don't come from old money, mm. generational wealth, new money, R right? Because because you remember what it was like to not mm -hmm. have it. And, I mean, let's be real; it's not everything, but it's right up there with oxygen, right? So, mm -hmm. um, less brown, you know. Um, Respect the grind. Mm -hmm. so. Respect it. Yeah. Well, Roberta, listen. This has been. Fantastic. We greatly appreciate your time mm -hmm. and the energy and the investment that you've made into us this morning, Absolutely. along with, with our listeners. Mm -hmm. um, a, as we've discussed, how important mindset is. If someone wants to follow you um, to maintain that mindset, where, mm -hmm. do they, where do they find you? Well, they definitely can find me on social media. They can follow me on Facebook, um, Roberta Hosky with the blue star. I do have Dr. Roberta Hosky, aka Miss Millionaire Mindset. If they want to um, learn more about the Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood, um, we also are on Facebook, and you can go to mmsisterhood.com. Um, I am also on Instagram, so you can follow me on IG. Um, and so in uh, YouTube, you can just go ahead and follow me on those social media platforms. What is your IG handle? Um, Dr. Roberta Hosky and with the blue star. <laughs> and of course, go pick up a copy of the book. Of course, you got to get broken. pick up the book, <laughs> Poverty Curse of Broken, a Roberta Hosky story available all over the world right now. But if you want your autograph coffee, go to my personal website at www. I don't know why I still say www. But <laughs> uh, connectwithroberta.com. Connectwithroberta.com. Go to merchandise and you can get your autograph copy. I do suggest anyone listening and is inspired by the story that you get the book so that you can get more of the details of uh, my life and um, understand that it is possible. Mm -hmm. Great. Y'all have a good week. <laughs>